Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. An average side-by-side -side is more than capable enough to do pretty much anything you might need to do anywhere you might need to do it. Whether it be sport or utility, average vehicles are all a person really needs. But where's the fun in that? Average is just another term for mediocre, and nobody wants to be described as mediocre. Your mid-level side-by-side might be enough, but as everybody knows, enough is never enough, which is why we have units like Polaris's Razor XP1000 Turbo and Can-Am's Maverick XRS Turbo. These are vehicles for those of us who just can't settle for good enough. We always want better, faster, more capable, more impressive, more fun. And there's no question, if it's fun you're after, these will serve it up in American-sized portions. The reality is, either of these side-by-sides will blow your mind every time you get in and hold it wide open. They both feature super high-tech suspension geometry and ridiculously impressive components. But when you strip away all the ooing and aahing, how do they really stack up against each other? Is one better than the other? And if so, how, why, and by how much? This is our job here at Dirt Tracks. We get a lot of flack for our opinions and because we never shy away from telling it like it is. Our job, the whole reason you're here watching this, is not for us to recite a brochure. It's to tell you the truth. And in this case, the truth is masked by a whole lot of trick gear and big horsepower, but it is in there. And today, we're gonna sift through to the bottom and get the straight goods on Can-Am's Maverick XRS Turbo and Polaris's Razor 1000 XP Turbo. The Razor Turbo is one serious piece of equipment. It is not your average Razor. It is its own beast, and there's so much more going on here than just extra air being forced into the cylinders. Let's take a look at what we do and don't like about Polaris's flagship side-by-side, -side, starting with the likes. We really like the Razor's double A-arm front and trailing arm rear suspension, and of course, it's 18 inches of travel. Actually, that's an understatement. We don't just like it, we love it. First, it's plush, like pillowy and bottomless, forgiving and dare I say supple? The Razor's 16 inches of front and 18 inches of rear suspension travel can smooth out stutter bumps, trail junk, huge whoop sections, and landings from ridiculous heights, all with the same setup. Yes, I said it. It can do all this without adjustment. I know this because I've done it all in one day without touching the shock settings. That's pretty impressive all on its own. Yet there are a number of adjustments you can still make if things get really extreme either way. Those enormous Fox Podium Bypass shocks have enough clicker knobs to keep a four-year-old busy. So if you feel like your Razor 1000 Turbo just isn't giving you the mind-blowing ride quality we're discussing here, you should probably get to adjusting them. But read up on it first, because it can get confusing. We really like how the Razor 1000 Turbo handles. Its EPS, while only a single mode system, is extremely well tuned and is speed sensitive, so it adapts perfectly to any condition you find yourself riding in. Combine the light and feedback free steering you're getting thanks to that EPS with a chassis that's quite long and obviously low, you get a vehicle that can be effortlessly pitched really sideways, or can carve a precise line, or can simply keep itself straight when things get sketchy. The Razor is a confidence-inspiring vehicle to drive fast. Handling that feels like it's translating your thoughts into actions, and suspension that erases your mistakes, it's a darn near perfect combo. Which leads me to another thing we like, the Razor's driver ergonomics. While I will say I still like the seating position of the Wildcat a bit better, there's not much to complain about behind the wheel of the Razor either. Laid back, well-bolstered yet comfortable seats, lots of legroom, excellent sight lines, it all just fits, and it puts the driver in the perfect position for either slow cruising or fast slayage. Basically, these ergonomics are universally good. Of course, it does go completely without saying we like 144 horsepower, and we like how the Razor's 1000cc parallel twin produces it. Power delivery is buttery smooth thanks to clutching that's on the soft side. The power band is quite mellow on the bottom end, but builds quickly into a tornado of wheel spinning, power sliding, knuckle whitening aggression. Of course, there's a few things we like less and some we just don't like at all about the Razor. And in the name of full disclosure, here they are. Wait, this one is simply a trade off of something we do like. A vehicle with a wheelbase this long with this type of travel is just bound to be heavy. 
there is a lot of metal connecting all that good stuff together. So while the weight is both inevitable and forgivable, it is also noticeable. Now, I don't necessarily think it hurts the rider handling of this vehicle. In fact, there's many arguments to suggest it may actually improve those areas. It's just that you can feel it a lot more than you can in the Maverick. Included accessories versus price. The Razor is not a cheap ride. It's a thousand bucks more than the Maverick XRS Turbo, but it really doesn't include any additional goodies. Even the wheels, while nice looking, are just aluminum wheels, not true beadlocks. The fit and finish of the Razor is just not on par with its only competition. Yes, it's a huge step in the right direction for Polaris, but when you're competing against Can-Am, a company known for German automotive style fit and finish, the bar is just set extremely high. Finally, and this might seem minor compared to the others, but if you ride this vehicle in the bush, it's a big one. The Razor's turning radius is not good. Now it's not Greyhound bus bad, more like cargo van bad. So there you go. That's what we really think about Polaris's Razor XP 1000 Turbo with no apologies and nothing held back. Now let's subject Can-Am's Maverick XRS Turbo to the same breakdown. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. The original Maverick before the DS was introduced, well, to be honest, I just didn't like the suspension on that vehicle at all. But when Can-Am released the first Maverick XDS Turbo, the most impressive aspect of the vehicle was, surprisingly, not the motor, but the new rear suspension Can-Am calls a virtual five link. This suspension system feels like it has more travel than it actually does. It's plush, it resists bottoming without causing the rear end to pogo, it sets up into corners really well, and it holds its line no matter how hard you push it. There's no question this rear suspension with its 16 inches of travel is what all Can-Am sport side-by-sides should have. Anything else is just not good enough anymore. We like how the Maverick Turbo handles as well. It handles quick and snappy, but not at all unpredictably. For carving tight lines in the woods, this setup is excellent, and tri-mode DPS makes it extremely versatile. Set it up with lots of assist for tight work in the woods, and lower the assist for high-speed fire roads and desert running. Feedback into the steering wheel is non-existent, but actual steering feel is excellent. We really like what you get for your money with the Maverick XRS Turbo as well. Fit and finish is top notch. In fact, it might be the best in the industry, but this vehicle goes a giant leap beyond any other in terms of included accessories. Yoshimura dual exhaust, real four point harnesses, beadlock wheels, front and rear bumpers. This is a vehicle that's already tricked out from the factory and it's still a grand less than the Razor. Finally, we really like this motor. Truth be told, we like any turbocharged motor, but 131 horsepower, 1000 cc turbocharged V-twin, that's just something special. And actually, that's more than just an opinion when it comes to the Maverick. Nearly every comparison you'll see or read shows the Maverick Turbo performing directly alongside the Razor Turbo. Fine, they're in the same class, right? Yeah, but the Maverick has a 13 horsepower disadvantage to the Razor. What's up with that? It's just an extremely well-tuned and clutched power plant made into a really, really efficient driveline. I had always assumed it was a power to weight thing, but the specs show the Maverick is only 50 pounds lighter than the Razor, so that can't be it. Now we need to move on to the dislikes. It's time to bring the word, brother. Let the truth be told, amen to that. The first thing we don't like about the Maverick is the seating position. I've harped on this time and time again, so I'm not gonna go into great detail here. This seating position is simply not ideal for super aggressive riding. In fact, if you push this vehicle hard in the biggest bumps, it can leave you feeling pretty sore. On its own, it's not as noticeable as when you put these two vehicles side by side in the same conditions. It's a big problem, maybe the biggest, but enough about that. We're not crazy about how the Maverick's virtual five-link rear suspension handles jumps and big whoops. Yes, we like the suspension because it's plush and its Fox shocks are hugely adjustable. I guess in its element, it is pretty good. But put the Maverick on a whooped out straightaway or track with big jumps right beside the Razor, and there's just something not right about how it all comes together. This is where the Maverick's virtual five link falls short compared to the Razor's true three link. Yes, the virtual five link has many advantages like almost no bump steer and very little scrub, but when it comes to flat out big bump and jump absorption, there's just something missing. 
Finally, the way the Mavericks 1000cc V-Twin is tuned and clutched is impressive if you want to be impressed. Usually if you just want to jam on the throttle and throw roost into the next county. But if you're trying to be precise in the woods or you want to ride the Maverick at a more relaxed pace, it's clutched too abruptly. This same clutching is what makes it feel so good when you stab the throttle, but it comes at the expense of slow speed smoothness. Where the Razor can be ridden slow or fast with equal comfort and precision, the Maverick is really more at home being ridden with a heavy foot. So now you know the truth about Polaris's Razor XP 1000 Turbo and Can-Am's Maverick XRS Turbo. You know what's good and what's not. The final piece of information you need is to know which one we think is the better vehicle, all things considered. And this is where we tend not to make friends. We're not paid to pick one over the other. We're paid to ride them both back to back in the same conditions, in all conditions, so we can truly understand which one is better and why. At the end of the day, Polaris has proven once again that they know a thing or two about building high performance pure sport side-by-sides. There's a really good reason they're number one, and the Razor XP1000 Turbo is a great example of why. The Maverick is awesome, no question. But when you put them side by side, the Razor's ergonomics and that bottomless three-link rear suspension are what set it apart. The Can-Am has a more impressive motor, especially when you consider the difference in horsepower. But if you're running huge whoops at high speeds or hitting big jumps, like these things were meant to, the Polaris stays flatter, straighter, and doesn't punish the driver. We think Polaris should be giving the customer a little bit more value for their money like Can-Am is with the XRS package. But even with less options for a thousand more dinero, we'd still take the Razor every time. Dirt Tracks is brought to you by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Lightweight performance. Last week, I started to install some very functional accessories on our brand new Razor 900 four-seater. My goal for this build is to increase the family friendliness of this vehicle. We started with a beautiful two-piece graphic poly roof to keep the sun off mom and dad as well as the kids out back. We added a front short windshield to keep the dust and debris out of our face while still allowing for airflow. And along with the windshield, we went with a mesh rear panel to keep the negatively pressurized cabin from sucking dirt and debris back into the rear of the cab while also keeping the harsh sun from burning the kids' necks out back. And finally, we finished up with a really cool all-in-one mirror, DVR, and backup cam that allows you to record all of the craziness that happens on your family adventures. While we could have had a really great time as is, there's a few extra accessories that I think will really up the fun factor when you're out with a family, or heck, even when you're just around the campsite. The world of aftermarket audio is massive, even in the side-by-side -side world. So you have a lot of choices. We like these MB Quartz sound pods from Polaris because they are fully water, dust, and mud proof while also utilizing a built-in mounting system. Add to this the built-in selectable red or blue LED lights and you're cruising with great tunes and in style. Sold as a pair of two, the 200 watt amplifiers really drive the eight inch mid bass and one inch tweeters, filling the cab or campsite with crisp, deep sound all day or night long. Now one thing that you do have to decide is how you're going to send your audio signal to your speaker pods. It's either a deck or a Bluetooth remote. For me, this is a no-brainer. A Bluetooth connection is always the best choice as you can leave your phone in the glove box. The Ambiquart Bluetooth Remote by Polaris is a cool add-on that works seamlessly with the Ambiquart audio pods. They wire up clean, mount secure, and are waterproof marine grade construction. You can change songs, adjust volume, and toggle modes with a simple press of a button, not requiring you to touch your phone at any time during your ride. Once you got your tunes figured out, I've found an incredible way to communicate with the family inside of the vehicle when you're riding is an in-car communication system. I mean, honestly, this truly changes the way that you experience the ride. The Comlink RTX system by Race Radios is very popular and offered direct from your Polaris dealer with an easy to install dash plate and all required hardware. The kit I'm installing today is for the front seats only, but a rear seat add-on kit is available. Five mile range allows easy communication with other vehicles in your area and it uses Vox for driver to passenger communication and a push to talk button for car to car. It's water resistant and simple to use and we found when you can talk with the family while riding, it really helps to make the experience more interactive. The world of side-by-side -side upgrades is growing bigger every day and that means that you need to make a wise buying choice when you're spending your hard earned money. The side-by-side -side upgrades I've showed you on this 900 Razor all work together seamlessly and fit like they were designed to be there because they were. So when you want to do an install at home, you're guaranteed fitment. 
Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. Faithful viewers know we tested the YXZ in a previous episode of Dirt Tracks Television. We took the all new YXZ to its limits to explore its potential and see what this all new pure sport side by side is all about. We thrashed the new YXZ, jamming its cog box with rapid fire commands from the WRX style 4 aft shift lever like it was a pinball machine. Let's say it this way, we abused that first YXZ in an attempt to upset the manual tranny's disposition. The scorecard at the end of that evaluation was YXZ 1, Luke 0. Luke concluded the YXZ is the real deal and it performs at a level not experienced in the side-by-side -side biz as a direct result of its unique full-on manual tranny. So what am I going to tell you that you don't already know about the new YXZ? We absolutely endorsed it as a near race-ready pure sport side-by-side -side with excellent suspension and great power, but more importantly the ability to extrude that power through an innovative manual clutch and gear-on-gear -gear transmission. I'm going to tell you this and back it up with some compelling video evidence. The YXZ can be used to transport your significant other, in this case my significant other, in a respectable and more importantly comfortable manner. Yes, the YXZ is a bare-chested, snarling, rubber-laying, wheel-spinning sensation, but contrary to what Luke suggested, it can be ridden respectably, even sedately, as a fully acceptable conveyance for a fun afternoon on the trails. The real issue is this. The YXZ has the ability to be trail ridden with other CVT equipped pure sport side by sides like the Maverick, the Razor and the Wildcat. The YXZ's manual transmission may not be as transparent as the pure sport competition CVTs are on trails. However, this gear on gear transmission is flexible enough to provide real trail riding fun. Keep in mind the YXZ has a full-on shiftable 4x4 driveline. It can navigate slippery stream beds, open desert and chocolate filled bogs with prowess equal to the competition. Quite frankly, the YXZ's first and second gears are low enough for rock crawling or picking your way through a root infested slime pit as successfully as any CVT equipped side by side. One other issue, the YXZ's exposed engine appears vulnerable to mud and water. Wrong O. It's as watertight as any side-by-side -side in the biz, utility, sport, or pure sport. Keep this in mind, there's no belt to get wet when you dunk it. I don't want you to think I can't appreciate the YXZ's impressive performance capabilities. I'm just saying that sane, comfortable trail riding is possible in the YXZ. For the record, I enjoy pounding shifts and railing berms as much as Luke and AJ do. After all, I am their dad. It's interesting, in light of this test ride, Yamaha has just announced a new YXZ variant called the SS for Sport Shift. The new YXZ SS comes with a semi-auto clutch and paddle shifters behind the wheel for gear selection. There's no clutch pedal, period. Shifting at any throttle opening is accomplished by pulling on the right side paddle for upshifts and the left side paddle for downshifts. The new SS even downshifts automatically if you forget when decelerating. Clearly, Yamaha has their eye on the recreational rider with the new SS. There's impressive technology at play everywhere you look on the new YXZ. These ginormous Fox Podium X2 piggyback coilover shocks provide adjustability and impressive bump absorption at sane or insane speeds. The YXZ's 998cc double overhead cam triple is a battle-proven variant with deep roots in Yamaha's power sport divisions. In fact, the latest snowmobile variant of this engine delivers 180 horsepower using a turbocharger. Hmm. For now, this power plant delivers a claimed 115 horsepower, which efficiently extrudes into all four wheels as a result of the YXZ's gear-on-gear -gear tranny. We won't claim its power rivals the turbos from Polaris or Can-Am. However, one power shifting run through all five cogs will convince you there's no need to apologize for the YXZ's power delivery. Let me say this. If you're planning the purchase of a new YXZ, you likely intend to ride the wheels off it 
and use it mostly for the purpose it was designed for. However, you may have to justify that purchase to someone else. And to this end, I give you photographic evidence that this can be accomplished. Enough said. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, the ride says it all. And by Arctic Cat, share our passion. Like the video you just saw? Do you want to see more? Click the subscribe link and add the Dirt Tracks channel and you're going to see a whole lot more great content.